Hi guys, welcome to my biochemistry and cell biology presentation and in this presentation I'll be covering carbohydrates. So the learning objectives are to be able to define monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide, oligosaccharide, glycoprotein and glycolipid, to recognize that sugars may exist in a cyclic form as well as a linear form, to be able to recognize and draw aldehyde and ketone groups and understand that aldose sugars contain an aldehyde group and a keto sugar contains a ketone group, and to be able to recognize whether a molecule is a monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide, or oligosaccharide, and to be able to count its carbon atoms. Okay, so now we've got some definitions, so I'm gonna, we're going to go through these one at a time. So a carbohydrate is a molecule composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So carbo meaning carbon, hydrate meaning water, which is H2O, which is hydrogen and oxygen. There you go, carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So a monosaccharide. A single sugar molecule with the general formula CH2ON. So mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar. So it's a single sugar. Then we've got a disaccharide, which is a molecule which consists of two monosaccharides joined together by a glycosidic bond. So di meaning two, saccharide sugars, two sugars. Then we've got polysaccharide, which is a large chain of sugar units joined together. So poly meaning many, saccharide sugars. Then we've got oligosaccharide, which is short chains of monosaccharides linked together. So oligo probably means short, I don't know. Saccharide sugars, so short sugar chains. Then we've got glycoproteins. So we, these are proteins which are conveniently attached to oligosaccharides. So glyco meaning glucose, like a glucose or carbohydrate. Protein, obviously meaning protein. Glycoprotein, sugar attached protein. Then we've got glycolipids. So this is, these are lipids which are conveniently attached to oligosaccharides. So again, glyco meaning like sugar molecule, lipid meaning lipid, put them together, glycolipid. Okay, so now we're going to show you some monosaccharides. So the first monosaccharide I'm going to introduce you to is glucose. And as you can see, glucose can appear as either a cyclic molecule or a linear molecule. And note, pay attention to the cyclic version as you will be able, should be able to recreate this drawing. So one of the best ways you can remember this drawing is that you've got this hexagon, with an oxygen in the top right corner. And each of these carbons that are on the hexagon, every OH group is pointing down, except for this one here. On this one, the OH is pointing up. And then you've got this one here. The, the next monosaccharide on the list is fructose. So this here is fructose, and as you can see, it's not, it's not a hexagon shape. It's more of a pentagon shape. So we've got the oxygen up here in the top. Then we've got this pentagon shape. And each of these carbons on the end having another carbon carbon attached, obviously with the OH, and this one only having hydrogen instead of an OH. Then last but not least, we've got galactose. So this is really similar to glucose in structure, but the only difference is, so on this one, all the OHs are pointing up, except for this one where it's pointing down. So if we go back to glucose, all of them are pointing down, except for this one. Whereas if we go back to galactose, all of them are pointing up, except this one. So that's the little difference between glucose and galactose. Okay, now we're going on to disaccharides. So this here is maltose, which is a combination of two glucose molecules together by a glycosidic bond. And this here is the glycosidic bond. So this is where you would see the two OH molecules. And then obviously it's a condensation reaction, H2O given off, giving us this glycosidic bond. And this here is sucrose, which is a combination of fructose and glucose. And this is what you have in your sugary sweets. So as we can see, we've got glucose here on the left, the, the hexagon-shaped molecule, and over here we've got fructose, which is the pentagon-shaped molecule. And this one here is lactose. So this is a combination of galactose and glucose. And those of you who have, who have got lactose intolerance, you do not have the ability to digest this molecule. So as a result, that's where you get your stomach cramps and all sorts going on. Then we've got polysaccharides, and really there are two main sorts of polysaccharides in biology. We've got starch, which is what you find in plant cells. Then you've got glycogen, which is what you find in stored in the liver of mammalian cells. The main difference here is, is that with glycogen, you can see how it's highly branched. So you've got branches coming off of each of these for a starch. It's more like an alpha helical type of shape, similar to a protein. Then you've got the oligosaccharides, and notice you can see there are many, many different types of oligosaccharides. If you think about it, there's just several thousand different combinations of short chains you can get. So now we're going to move on to glycoproteins. So 
adding the glycan group to a protein is what gives itself its identity. So if we just look at the one on the left, this is an antibody. This is a type of glycoprotein. So these blue-green bits are, in, are indicating the amino acids. And that yellow-red bit that you see at the bottom part of it, that is the oligosaccharide. So that makes this antibody unique. And then also, on the tip of the sperm cells and around the egg, you get glycoproteins as well. So these is what allows these to interact with one another and to also give itself its identity. So in glycoproteins, the oligosaccharides are covalently linked to specific amino acids. You can either get N-linked, which is when the sugar is linked to an asparagine residue, or you can get O-linked when it's linked to the, one of the OH groups, which are on this serine, or the three anine amino acids. And then finally, we've got glycolipids. So again, similar to glycoproteins, glycolipids can give a cell its identity. So one of the most known examples of these is your, is your blood type groups. So depending on what glycolipids you've got, depends on your blood group. So if you've got one specific type of glycolipid, you could be blood group A, B, not. You could be just all, well not all sorts, but you can just be only one type of specific blood group. And that's it, it's been pretty short, but we're already at your test cell section. So here I'm gonna ask you some questions. I've allocated a number of marks you can achieve. I'm not gonna tell you how to get the marks. That's up to you to decide. So for three marks, Draw the structure of glucose. Then for one mark, what is an oligosaccharide? And finally for three marks, name three examples of disaccharides. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you found this presentation useful. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck revising. Peace.